Hello everyone, welcome to another uh, pet pairing episode. I feel like I haven't really filmed one of those in about a month, I want to say. I'm going to take my uh, Auric Glow Glass now to apply as usual underneath my eyes to brighten up my under eyes a little bit. Um, you know, life happened and quite a few new releases that needed attention. So the past few weeks I've been mostly focusing on demoing all the new products that I have picked up that were of interest to me. And I thought maybe in this video we can revisit again some of them. I'm not really going to demo all the products besides the foundation from uh, Lisa Eldridge because I've been testing that quite intensively on and off for the past week since I received it. And I am going to just briefly mention a couple of the uh, new eyeshadow palettes from Pat McGrath that I have gotten and um, my NARS Climax palette. And just, you know, give some round up thoughts on all of these uh, products. I'm applying my Clarins Instant Concealer, by the way. That thing just won't die. I keep trying to pan it and I'm using it so regularly and it still won't die. Goes to show you how much product there is in those little tubes and I'm pretty sure that if I actually cut the tube, which I will, and I will depot whatever is uh, left in it, will probably last me for another half a year. So I'm ready to use my foundation. Uh, in the end I was able to use my my shade match, which is the shade 06, which is a light with golden undertone, about three times for uh, my full face. I don't like full coverage at all. I apply my foundations with a very light coverage and maybe something that I have failed to mention, but I try to apply very little, minimal to almost no product in places in on my face where I feel like the foundation will gather anyway uh, such as here around my smile lines whatever foundation I put there if I put more it will gather in my lines and it will annoy the bejesus out of me so I actually apply almost nothing in this area of my face uh, I try to also apply minimal product over here because I always feel like it starts to look weird uh, throughout the day and for the rest of my face I apply a very minimal layer. Anyway, all that was to say that I was able to use the foundation a whole of three times. So for today I'm actually going to dip back into the shade number 7 which is a uh, light with neutral tones. Overall I've been quite happy with the foundation in the sense that I think it's, as expected, a really beautiful uh, formula. I think a lot of people will enjoy this formula. Something I forgot to say about the foundation is that it's a self-setting foundation. So if you're someone who doesn't really like to powder, um, that's very convenient because you don't actually need to uh, go in with any additional powder or anything to set the foundation after you have applied it. It will just kind of like set on its own. It is a very beautiful formula to work with in the sense that it's very smooth. It kind of has that blurring uh, property where it makes your skin feel a little bit as if you have put a filter on it. Um, I personally find this foundation to be more on the medium coverage. I'm not sure everyone understands these terms maybe a little bit differently. Perhaps for some people this will lean on the more light coverage side, but for me this is more of a... Um, light medium leaning onto the medium side. So as you can see I applied very minimal product here around my uh, mouth. I just whatever is left on the brush I just slightly brush it around here because I know that whatever formula I put there it will gather into my uh, smile lines. Now I do set my foundations because I tend to get oily throughout the day and um, I prefer to just have that extra protection, extra safety that my foundation won't start sliding around. And this is yet again another product that I've mentioned before and it's a product that I'm trying very hard to pan. It is my uh, Mood Light Ambient Lighting Powder from Hourglass and you can tell already that I have uh, pretty much almost finished the product. I think by the end of the year this powder will be finished, which is nice because I've had it for I want to say close to two and a half or three years. So I think it's about time that this powder is uh, out of my collection and I can focus on the uh, other ones that need to be finished up as well. For my bronzer today, I'm going to take the uh, Milk Cream Bronzer in the shade Baked, which I have really been enjoying. So yeah, overall I have only good things to say about the uh, foundation. I think the finish is beautiful, the longevity is pretty okay in the sense that it 
like every foundation that is not marketed as a long wearing high coverage foundation this is not an Estee Lauder double wear foundation it will not stay on your face for 16 hours straight without moving around although I'm pretty sure that the original Estee Lauder double wear also wears uh, off during the day if you have a bit more of an oily skin like I do so for me for instance especially now with the uh, mask wearing the foundations uh, that I tend to use which are all very light coverage very light with foundations like the uh, Estee Lauder Double Wear Nude uh, and the Dior Backstage foundations they all wear off around my nose and like mouth area and slightly here where the straps of the uh, masks are but uh, neither of these foundations including the uh, foundation from Lisa Eldridge we're, will wear out in an ugly way it just they just gracefully wear off to the point where there's pretty much no nothing left on my skin so 10 hours into the wear there will not be much foundation left on my skin uh, I'm going to actually also use my uh, Lisa Eldridge blush in the shade Dante's Dream which I realized that I haven't really used um, that much recently or demoed on camera ever since I actually purchased it and demoed it for the first time for you so I think it's a you know if we're doing a little bit of a Lisa Eldridge look although this will be the last Lisa Eldridge product that I'm going to use today um, it's a good time to bust out this beautiful blush as well I think that because my preference for blush is also a bit more on like the shades like Desert Orchid from Pat McGrath like the warmer peachier shades uh, and this is more of like a neutral brown mauve I don't tend to use these sort of shades uh, as often so I've been thinking whether I should have chosen the shade um, the coral shade in the collection but at the same time I have a coral shade like a cream liquid blush from Suku in a coral shade so I didn't want to also be super redundant and as you can see I still have a ton left that I'm not going to be able to use because I squirted a little bit too much I don't want to make it sound like this foundation is some sort of a holy grail and it is uh, unparalleled in the makeup world. It's a really really good foundation and I think you're going to enjoy it if you enjoy these types of foundations, you know, lighter coverage, uh, self-setting, uh, blurring. But if you already have good foundations in your collection, like I do, like my Dior and Estee Lauder foundation, are just as good. They are just a bit of a lighter coverage and one of them is a bit more on the dewy side, which I also personally really, really enjoy, because this is more of like a satin matte finish. But with that said, uh, it is a really good foundation and depending on the price... I might pick it up immediately upon launch or I might wait it out a little bit until I have finished one of my other foundations and only then pick up this one. Now let's move on into Pat McGrath uh, territory. I'm going to grab again my uh, Lunar Nude Highlighter which I mentioned also in one of my previous videos that I really really enjoy despite the fact that it looks a little bit cool toned on my skin so what I do now and it's a you know I know that there is an extra step involved but personally I don't mind because I really enjoy the process of applying uh, makeup and if I have time I will make that extra effort because it's worth it to me but I really enjoy the formula on this highlighter because it is so beautifully smooth and reflective uh, but because it doesn't always fit the looks that I want to do I do tend to bring in a highlighter that has more warm tones just to bring that warmth onto my skin today I'm going for a bit of a hybrid between a warm and cool look so I don't really feel the need to be applying a warmer toned um, highlighter over top of this shade I think I'm just going to keep it a little bit like this a bit more on like the neutral cool side because the I think the blush and the bronzer also work really well with these tones so I'm just absolutely 100% uh, very much enjoying this highlighter and now let's move into the eye look where you're going to see a palette that I realized I've never really featured in a pet pairing video for a few reasons uh, but before we move into the eye palettes I'm just going to quickly car carve out my crease with statuesque uh, which I have as an idol from uh, Pat. So the uh, eyeshadow palette in question of course is the Divine Rose uh, 1 palette which I believe I have never featured in one of my pet pairing uh, videos so far and I think there are several reasons for that. First and foremost it's not um, absolutely my colors when it comes to tones. It's a bit more of a cool tone palette and because of that it is also 
to me more of a winter palette. I do tend to use this palette much more often in the winter than I do in the summer and um, fall months and the spring. So I believe I started the pet pairing series sometime in the spring which also explains why I have not really felt the need to be busting out this eyeshadow palette in the uh, few months uh, prior. But you are probably going to see it a bit more often now that we are moving into the cooler months because I do actually really enjoy using it in the winter time. So the first shade that I'm going to grab from the Divine Rose palette is this brown shade over here. The deeper brown, it's not a very deep brown shade but it is deep enough to uh, use on your outer corners but for me a little bit too deep to use as a crease shade. I don't know how yours feels but it's very strange mine feels like it has a hard pan and as if it would be very difficult to work with but when I pick it up with a brush and I apply it on my eyes it actually works still really really well so that is one of those uh, puzzling facts of life that I can't really explain to you if I look at the pan of this eyeshadow or I try to just like finger swatch it like this it looks absolutely abysmal and I think oh no this uh, shadow is kind of unusable to me but no you can perfectly fine use it, it looks um, still very vibrant on the eyes. I'm just going to build it up right here into the uh, outer edge of my eye and I'm also going to bring my fluffy blender brush to blend it in together with Statuesque. I've made it very clear that I was not a huge fan of this year's uh, quads from Pat and I'm still not a fan of them. As you guys know, I have put them up, well, if you didn't know, I put mine up for sale after my review video because I was sure that especially the Deep Space Divinity Quad is not something I would ever uh, even think of using because the shades, um, two of the shades in that uh, palette just do not flatter me personally. Maybe they flatter you and maybe you really enjoy them, that's awesome for you, but they don't really uh, flatter me. And I already sold that quad. The Bronze Borealis quad is still up for sale and I think if I don't manage to sell it I will probably keep it because uh, I still think that the shade Sienna Rose for instance is quite a beautiful uh, elegant neutral shade. So but it wouldn't be something that I absolutely feel the need to use which is why I think if, if it can if I can rehome it, it would be better, but if I ha if I can't uh, find takers for it, I will probably keep it and just try to use it in combination with other palettes so that I enjoy it a bit more. Now, a palette from Pat that I have really, really been enjoying though is her Celestial Odyssey palette. I did not expect to, to like that palette as much as I do. I thought that it would be, you know, a nice addition to my collection, but because it doesn't have any you know, more special type of formulas. It would just be something that I like to use as a companion every now and then. Oh my gosh, no, I like using that palette on its own. I really, I have so many more looks in mind and I cannot wait to uh, dip back into it. So it is uh, the one item from the collection that I absolutely recommend. I think it's super worth it and I think you're really going to enjoy it. I'm going to grab my Pixie Epoxy now. So if you had, um, so if you're someone who wants to get something from the collection but you were kind of waiting uh, on reviews, I stick to my opinion that the the item that is the most worth from the eyeshadow part of the collection is the uh, Celestial Odyssey Mega Palette. And when it comes to the highlighter, you need to be prepared. It's a beautiful formula, a bit of a cooler undertone but also very expensive, so you need to consider that as a factor as well. Okay, now we are going to actually go into the second palette that I want to use today and that is the Voyeuristic Vixen Quad. The Voyeuristic Vixen Quad um, was released earlier this year. I'm going to take this shade here which is called Twilight Bronze. It's a bit of a neutral, cool leaning um, shade with a beautiful tone, very creamy and it has a lot of uh, very subtle, very elegant sparkles to it. Uh, and I'm going to pop this shade right here onto like the center portion of my eyelid and bring it slightly inwards. It is such a beautiful and elegant shade. Actually, if you wanted to get one of Pet Squads from this year, I would just highly recommend getting Voyeuristic Vixen. I think you're going to be so much happier because um, the shades in this quad are just beautiful. And then of course you get that gorgeous Fire Nectar shade which is out of this world gorgeous. The next thing I want to do, um, let me just sh show you very quickly. I am going to use the uh, champagne toned shade from the Voyeuristic Vixen Quad, which has slight pink tones to it, but I am going to just 
mix it on my brush together with one of the uh, topper shades from the Divine Rose palette, in particular this one over here, which is also featured in her uh, highlighter trio palette. I don't remember the name of this shade, but it's this beautiful uh, shade which comes across as white, but actually has a very beautiful uh, pink duochrome to it. So I'm going to kind of like mix the two shades together so that the pink uh, sheen is not too stark but it's mixed in a little bit with that uh, champagne white shade. So I'm just going to mix them up together on my brush and apply them like that onto my um, the inner corners and inner third of my lid and I think these shades just work so beautifully together in terms of texture, in terms of tone, one makes the other a little bit more interesting and it kind of subdues the duochrome effect which in this particular look I would like to do, I don't want there to be too much pink in the look. Another palette that I have truly, absolutely 100% enjoyed so much using is the NARS uh, Climax palette. What a beautiful gem of an eyeshadow palette. You guys, if you were looking for something a little bit um, extraordinary, uh, not your typical color story for an eyeshadow palette, something that is beautiful texture but very elegant and also very interesting in terms of its tones, then the Climax palette is just so incredibly beautiful. That is another eyeshadow palette that I would certainly recommend above the two coats from Pat McGrath because it is also on the pricier side, but I just think you're getting something a little bit more out of it. Um, what I'm going to do next is go back into the uh, Divine Rose palette and I'm going to take the Astro shade here and I'm going to very gently dab it pretty much all over that uh, pink that we applied over here just using my brush because I feel like if I use my fingers I'm going to go uh, a bit too intense and I don't want that to be too intense of a sparkle I just want that light glitz here onto the inner portion of my uh, eyelids. And if you would prefer to keep the look a bit more on the neutral cool tone side, then you can layer astral, the astral shade from Divine Rose over top of the Twilight Bronze shade from the uh, Voyeuristic Vixen Quad. But, because I want to do something a little bit warmer leaning on my lips, I received a new lipstick yesterday and I would really like to bring it a a bit more warmth into the look so that it fits a little bit better with the lipstick. I am actually going to take just a few flakes from uh, Fire Nectar and I'm going to layer that over top of Twilight Bronze. So I'm going to bring that right here very very lightly. I don't want it to completely overtake the look. On my lower lash line I'm going to dip back into the deep brown shade and then I'm going to apply this more uh, satin bronzy shade onto the rest of my lower lashes. And this pretty much rounds up all of my thoughts on the recent products that I have purchased. I did not mention Lisa's lipsticks because Lisa's lipsticks are something that we have spoken about before and these new colors are just an extension to her line and the quality is still the same. Um, I think it's needless to say that for me, as well as for a lot of people, the shade Velvet Cinnabar was the standout shade because it is just such a glorious fall shade. And for me personally, it's a very unique shade in my collection. I don't really have anything quite like it. There was a comment from one of you that I have pinned underneath my uh, Lisa Eldridge uh, video where you mentioned several lipstick shades that were similar to Cinnabar. I can't guarantee because I don't have those shades. But in case one of you was interested in uh, potential dupes that are not from Lisa Eldridge because for whatever reason you cannot get along with her formula or you cannot order from her, then you can take a look at those alternative shades over there. I haven't applied my lipstick yet because I have another product that I really wanted to share with you. A couple of weeks ago one of my friends from work showed up wearing a lipstick which just looked so mesmerizing on her. It made her complexion look brighter, it just livened her up and I kept staring at her the whole afternoon and I kind of forgot to ask what shade she was wearing but then in a, a WhatsApp chat later on with a couple of other makeup enthusiasts that we have in the lab it came up um, which lipstick she was wearing and it was in fact the shade Fever Dream from Pat McGrath. And of course immediately I was like, meerkat, I need this shade. Uh, I went to look on Pat McGrath's website, it's still full price and then I thought, oh maybe I can wait for her yearly Cyber Monday lipstick sale and pick it up when it's uh, heavily discounted. But I'm not, 
you know, patience is not one of my virtues, unfortunately. Then I went to look on a uh, marked plot, which for those of you who live in the Netherlands, you will immediately recognize it as the Dutch eBay. And uh, a lady there was selling a bunch of her matte trans lipsticks, uh, practically new, because she didn't get along with the formula. And luckily for me, she was selling the shade Fever Dream as well. And I immediately picked it up. I bought it for uh, 20 euros, in case you guys were curious, which is still, you know, not as cheap as you would have put them up on a Cyber Monday sale and I still had to pay for shipping. But you know, still significantly less than 40 euros, which is what it costs on Pat McGrath's website. So this is the shade in question and I'm hoping that my camera is sort of picking up the uh, undertone of this lipstick. It is a gorgeous, like burnt sienna color. Let me swatch it for you right here and then I'm going to apply it on my lips. It is just such a perfect blend of red, coral and a bit of brown and it just on my complexion and on like people with warmer tones because several of us at the lab tried the, the lipstick in the meantime that is the cool thing about you know colleagues who have different makeup than you do that you can swap things around and try them out before you buy them um, and I already know how this lipstick looks on me it looks absolutely glorious so let me apply it so that you can see it as well I really enjoyed the tone of this lipstick. I really like how the whole look turned out. I hope you did too. And before I conclude this video, one of you actually uh, mentioned that you would like to see a comparison of a Velvet Cinnabar against the shade Fever Dream. So I have my uh, Cinnabar lipstick here and now I'm going to swatch it against um, Fever Dream from Pat McGrath. I think they are very, very different shades because Fever Dream has far more red and brown and it's a much deeper shade. There you have a uh, swatch of the two lipsticks and uh, the same person actually asked me to do a comparison that I was planning in the original video which was a comparison between Cinnabar and the shade Flash 3 from Pat McGrath, which is another one of her matte trans lipsticks. Um, I was planning on doing that swatch and then last minute I thought, no, it is such a different shade that there is not even any point in me swatching it. But uh, here we are because you guys uh, asked for it. So here is a swatch of Flash 3. Flash 3 is so much more of like a mulberry color in comparison to Cinnabar. Cinnabar has a lot of red, a lot of ochre, uh, a lot of brown, whereas the Flash 3 color from Pat McGrath, it is a gorgeous, stunning shade, but it leans so much more like purple and mulberry in my opinion. I hope you enjoyed this pet pairing video, let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below and we will see each other again very very soon. Bye!